Alright guys, thanks so much for coming out. This is a free event for the Chiang Mai SEO conference happening Friday, November 3rd. Hope to see a lot of you guys there. Um, I'm going to be handing this over very shortly to Greg Elfrey from Empire Clippers. One of my good friends, I think we've known each other for about a year now, right? About a year, yeah. About a year. Um, close friend of mine, quickly became close friends. We've actually played Dungeons and Dragons together. As, As the best, best player. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, Greg is the content manager for Empire Flippers. You've probably seen some of his very prolific guest posts for Huffington Post. Uh, uh, the Hustle, Shopify, pretty much everywhere you hang out, I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Greg's got a great, a great presentation for us on selling digital assets. Uh, who here has an affiliate website? Cool. Anyone ever flipped a site on Empire Flippers or any other marketplaces? Those guys are cool. Those guys are cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, how many people want to learn more about what it takes to flip a digital asset and make some money? All right, good, good. All right, so the show is yours. Show us how it's done. All right, uh, thanks for having me here, Matt. Uh, I'm really excited. I, I even prepared this speech four times. Uh, so please forgive me if it's not too good. I have a bit of a cold, so I might do, do a little coughing, but basically how the presentation will go. Uh, I'm going to cover behind the scenes of selling a multiple six-figure affiliate site, what that looks like in terms of some generalities, and then at the end, we're actually going to go do a case study of a $235,000 Amazon affiliate site that we sold. Uh, it's Rob, uh, yeah, it's Rob Atkinson's site, uh, Mr. Famous Atkinson himself. Go and talk to him, smart SEO guy. Uh, so, who Empire Flippers is? Uh, or do most of you guys know what Empire Flippers is? I, I mean, raise your hands if you know. Yep. Okay, cool. So I don't have to talk too much about ourselves. But basically, we're the largest curated marketplace when it comes to buying and selling online businesses. We're 100% remote distributed. So, like most of you guys out here doing the digital nomad thing, we don't really have an office or anything like that. We just collaborate collaborate on the internet. And every few months we meet up for about a month and bang out a bunch of work. So we're also on the Inc. 5000 list. That is a magazine and back in America that uh, accumulates the fastest growing companies. Uh, we applied for it and we came in the first year at 161 and this year at 172. Uh, just to give you like a quick range of the kind of businesses we sell, uh, on average we sell anywhere from uh, $50,000 Amazon affiliate sites all the way up to a $1.7 million e-commerce business. So when it comes to uh, the kind of businesses, we're growing pretty fast, and we are becoming the leader when it comes to anything beneath the $10 million level. So uh, part of the reason I'm giving this presentation is because one of, one of our big things we want to do is become the leaders in helping people buy, sell, and invest in online businesses. And part of that is the education, right? Because a lot of you out there building affiliate sites probably have no idea you can even sell your site. Like, what? <laughs> I was talking to a guy just the other day who was uh, like, oh, you can't sell something that has PBN links on it. Like, you absolutely can. We, we've sold tons of them, dozens and dozens of them. So uh, that's part of our mission is to educate the market out here. Uh, to show so who I am, my name is Greg Elfring, as I already said, a content manager. Uh, two and a half years ago or so, I was still on oil rigs in Alaska in the Arctic Circle, covered in mud, working for Halliburton. I call them the Walmarts of the oil field because they always roll back prices for their employees. Uh, great place to work. <laughs> uh, I was actually out here reading blogs like Matt Diggity, uh, Tung Trans, Cloud Living, Authority Hacker, uh, working those 12 hour days, just like, man, I really want to stop doing this. And uh, fortunately, I started freelance writing and started learning a thing or two about content marketing and somehow convinced Empire Flippers to let me work for them. So, so the first question you might want to ask yourself is why even sell a business? A lot of you guys out there, like I said, are just starting out. Uh, you guys might have your first affiliate site doing a thousand, maybe five thousand dollars a month. And you're thinking, why the hell would I ever sell this thing? It took me so much effort to build it in the first place. I would be crazy to sell it, right? But the truth is, if you can build one, you can build many. You can own the factory by writing down your processes. And if you own the factory, that means you can sell all of them. You don't have to have any emotional attachment with the sites you build as, as your processes get better and better. And uh, the things you can do by selling those businesses, it's pretty cool. So <clears throat> on average, you will sell an affiliate site between 
like 20 and 40 X of his net monthly profit. So say it was a thousand dollar net uh, Amazon affiliate site, you could sell that for like 26,000, 30,000 dollars. Uh, and you can use that money to invest into other stuff. So some of the things that our sellers do, they'll buy real estate free and clear. You know, if you sell a 200,000, 400,000 dollar business, you can buy a nice rental property without a mortgage, right? Uh, they'll invest in other offline investments, such as stocks, gold, stuff like that. Uh, they can also use capital. This is probably the most common thing that sellers do. They use the capital from selling their business to leverage themselves into a more competitive and lucrative space. So uh, if you have like $200,000 in your war chest and you go into a competitive niche, it's gonna be a lot easier to compete in that niche than if you had zero dollars, right? So that's one reason people sell their asset. And the final reason, uh, well not the final reason, but the last kind of fun reason, is uh, the diversification of digital assets. So we'll get a seller, he sells an affiliate site that has all his traffic coming from Google, and then they'll go buy an e-commerce site. Something like an Amazon FBA business where all this traffic is coming from Amazon. <laughs> all of us as SEOs have probably been hit at least once by a Google algorithm update where it's just a big punch in the face. Like, thank you, thank you Google for that. I really, really appreciated that this morning. Uh, so diversify your digital assets, while yes, by buying Amazon IP business, now you're reliant on the Amazon algorithm, at least you're not 100% reliant on the Google algorithm. So that's another reason why people sell. There's a bunch of personal reasons people might sell too, like you know, uh, maybe they have to pay a medical operation, or I mean, a really unfun reason like a divorce, or uh, one of our sellers, he actually sold his business to raise the money to adopt a child, you know, so that was kind of cool. So. Here are some of the stuff you can do to increase the value of your site. Now, this is before you submit the site, before you talk to anyone uh, about buying it or anything like that. You should probably plan about 12 months out at least before you sell a site, and especially if it's a big one where you know you can fix a lot of stuff to increase its value. So some of the obvious things is cut unneeded expenses. If you're, if you're paying a monthly fee for your tools that, that aren't being used actively on the site, there's no reason to have them in there. Uh, you can build and monetize an email list. Now, if you build an email list for a site that's like bestlighters2017.com, probably not the best use of your time. Uh, but if you have a more of an authority site with a broader niche, then this could be very worth your time because that email list can be used to bring that traffic back to the site, offer more affiliate offers outside of just Amazon offers. So you can give you like CPA, do all the fun stuff. And that could add some serious value to your business and you know, create more cash flow on a monthly basis for you, so that's nice too. Uh, one thing you can do as well is change PBN links to white hat links, that's something Rob did in the case study, and we'll go into that here in a second. Uh, you also create SOPs, that stands for Standard Operating Procedures. Basically, a standard operating procedure should detail how you do something, so say like keyword research, your content format, how, how you format content, how you upload content even. Anything you give to a VA or even an apprentice would be you know, qualified as an SOP. And basically when you hand that to someone, they should be able to do it 80% as good as you, that's the goal. And when you have a bunch of those SOPs to give to a potential buyer, while that doesn't necessarily increase the price of your business, it does increase the buyer confidence in your business. So they look at that like, oh, well, this guy has basically an operations manual for me to follow. So that's, that, you know, there's an entire roadmap of what to do to maintain this business, right? So that adds a lot of value to a potential buyer and it gives them a lot more confidence in what you're selling. So three months out, you don't really want to do anything too crazy here because your, your business is gonna be evaluated on like a six month to a 12 month net average. So if you do anything crazy and your income suddenly dips, you kind of screw yourself. So you don't, you don't want to do that, right? Uh, but right now, this is a really good time to look at back at your traffic, look back at your revenue numbers. Was there any dips? You know, was there any spikes? When, why, why were there a, a spike or a dip? You know, have good reasons for that, especially on the dips. Because the hardest questions you're going to be asked is always going to be about your traffic dip or revenue dip, right? So you better have good answers for that. Uh, another thing is you want to remove duplicate content, disavow bad links. This is an SEO crowd, so I'm sure I don't have to explain too much what that means. 
But uh, yeah, do good content. They, they could definitely creep into sites. Like, if you have a really big authority site, you might do some keyword cannibalization purely on accident, you know? So you want to get rid of that if possible. And obviously, if someone did a negative SEO campaign for you, it's probably a good idea to get rid of it at this point. So, uh, what I talked about earlier, about changing PDN links to white hat links, Rod Atkinson actually did this. He partnered up with uh, Doug Cunnington a few months before they sold their site. There was a little thing that Doug uh, ran called Project Go White Hat. And uh, some of you out there who are hardcore gray hats are like, screw that white hat shit, man. I'm not going to do any of that. But you might be surprised you, uh, how much you can actually earn by going white hat. Uh, so we analyzed 99 PBN sites and 99 sites without PBNs, uh, money sites. It just happened to work out that we sold 198 and it even split. It was, it was weird. <laughs> but uh, you know, White Hat on average sold for 10% more value. Now, that might not sound a lot, but if your site is for 200K, then that's like an extra $20,000 in your pocket, right? So it can be worthwhile to change those PBN links, especially if you know a good consultant, like. Rob used with uh, Doug Huntington, he had all the systems already in place, and we'll break that down a little bit more about what they did later on in the presentation. Uh, one other thing to know about white hat sites is they sell a lot quicker, because again, the buyer confidence is there. Uh, you know, There's no PBN objections, none of that. Everyone's hungry for a white hat site, so that's one of the reasons why they're more valuable. But, with that said, a note on PBNs, now, I know a majority of this crowd, or a lot of this crowd at least, they're building out a ton of PBNs, and I've talked to a few people already here who were surprised to hear you can sell a site that has PBN links on it. So I want to uh, kill the myth already. Don't believe the hype. There's plenty of people who are buying PBN sites, and a lot of these buyers, they're not stupid, they're not naive. In fact, they are quite successful, savvy buyers. We have uh, buyers that buy sites that have PBN links over and over and over again from us, year in and year out. And if they were just losing money all the time, I mean, I don't know why they would keep that business model, right? It'd be, be strange. So uh, most of the time, uh, a buyer doesn't care as much about the SEO as you might think. SEOs, they tend to care about their SEO a lot more. <laughs> a little bit more myopic, I guess. Uh, well, sometimes a buyer, they just want to buy the site for the data and maybe they're like a Facebook ad guru and the SEO is just kind of like icing on cake for your affiliate site, something along those lines. Uh, one thing that you should know about PBM sites though, if you decide to sell, just be prepared to take a little bit longer with them because you will have those objections, especially if it's a smart buyer. The smart buyer might not care that there's a PBM, but he'll make it seem like he cares. <laughs> and because of that, he'll try to talk you down on the price, you know, like, oh, well, there's a PBN, maybe you should discount this instead of 26X, let's do 25X, or maybe you'll do a longer earnout period tied to rankings or something like that. So that's something to expect more of. Now, one way you can overcome this problem is overcoming it with just massive amount of support. And from, honestly, if you're building out Amazon affiliate sites, or really almost any affiliate site, the amount of support you can give someone is pretty minimal. It's, once the work is done, it's all front-loaded, right? There's not that much work left to do unless they want to grow the site or something like that. But they're planning on maintaining the site where it, at, where it is. There isn't much to do. So if your competitor is selling a site similar to yours, as White Hat is offering 30-day support, you go offer 60-day support, and you probably won't even do that much. Like, probably in two weeks, the guy is good to go most of the time. So. Uh, that's one way to get rid of get rid of overcoming with support. If you have SOPs like that manual book, that's also super helpful because again, it shows you have confidence in your processes and your business, which is part of the major reason that buyers object to PDS because they're not confident, right? But if you can show them how confident you are in it, then you know it makes them a lot more appreciable of what you, what you built. One last thing, or two last things actually. Uh, so one of the things you can do if you sell a site with PDS is you don't have to give away the PBN network. That's another uh, misconception a lot of people have. Instead, you can just rent out the links, which creates a little small residual income. So say you had, um, I don't know, eight, eight links that are PBN links pointing to your affiliate site, and you, sold, you rented them to the buyer for $10 per, so $80 per month. The only thing that would change in this outcome is that since your business is based off a monthly net profit, that $80 would go into the expenses of, of that net profit. So that would be like inside the business listing already for the seller or for the buyer looking at it like, hey look, you have to pay $80 to maintain this business. 
Uh, and of course, some of those uh, buyers, they'll do, they'll go white hat and eventually stop paying you that, perhaps, and say, hey, I don't need this link anymore. But some of them will just keep them forever. Like, oh, it's 80 bucks, no problem. I'll pay that to, to the end of time, you know, whatever. Uh, the last thing I'll tell you about PBNs, which I kind of already hinted at, about taking longer, is expect more deal structures, especially if it's a high six-figure site. There's probably going to be a lot more wheeling and dealing and negotiation that's involved. <coughs> Speaking of negotiation, uh, the biggest key thing to negotiation, in my opinion, is just to be flexible. So some people, they come with just incredibly unrealistic uh, ideas like, ah, uh, this is a $600,000 website, I expect you to pay me $600,000 right now, like, come on, man. <laughs> Most people don't have 600 k just sitting in their pocket for an Amazon affiliate site, right? So that's why, uh, you know, you gotta negotiate. Now, with that said, you should be flexible on terms like price, support, things like that, but you should not be flexible on a hard minimum sales price. So this is the price you should have in your head, like, hey, uh, I'm listed this site for 275, but I'm more than happy to walk away with 175. If you have that kind of flexibility, uh, you know you don't want to go down below your hard minimum sales price. If you want to walk away happy, right? You don't want to walk away like, man, I'm sure glad I got scammed on that deal. Like, you don't want to do that. You want to walk away actually making the money that makes you happy that you sold the asset, right? The next thing I would suggest is become hyper responsive. So this is something we see all the time. Uh, sellers just stop responding to buyer questions. They go off to a trip to Bali. Maybe they're having a spiritual quest to Chiang Mai somewhere, you know? Uh, they just stop talking to the buyer and they wonder, well, why isn't my deal getting sold? Well, maybe because you haven't answered an email in two weeks. Uh, so we've, we've seen buyers on the verge of buying, you know, a six-figure uh, or even multiple six-figure site. And they say, hey, look, I'll still buy a six-figure site from you guys. I'm not buying from this guy. He hasn't responded to me in a week and a half. If he's not willing to respond to me when I'm about to give him like 150K, how bad is he going to be during the support stage, right? This guy's going to be awful to work with. So uh, definitely be hyper responsive if you want to be, uh, you get a better price on your deal and get a quicker price. But also uh, be ready to answer the difficult questions. So that would be like the traffic dips and stuff like that, stuff I already kind of covered. And uh, perhaps the most important thing is look at someone that's buying your site as your customer. Because they really are, right? They're paying you the money, you're giving them a product, they are your customer. So uh, the way to think about this, perhaps the best way for our crowd here is, when you build out a niche affiliate site, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get traffic that has a problem to your content that solves that problem and your affiliate offers a solution, right? That's what we're all trying to do, pretty much. Um, so look at your business in the same perspective. It, your business is the solution to that buyer's problem, and you need to think, okay, well, why is that the solution to this buyer's problem? And uh, if you use a brokerage like us, for example, you kind of get a little bit of an added benefit because uh, our business advisors are also talking to the buyers, right? So we can give you a little bit more of a heads up into the psycholo psychology of the prospect and so on. If you're, a, if you're doing a private sale, you know, uh, think about where you found him. Did you find him at a Chamber of Commerce event? So maybe he's new, new to this stuff and he's really scared. Or maybe you found him at a, you know, a meetup here in Chiang Mai and he's well clued into digital marketing. You know, try to always think about like, what is the problem and what can my site solve? So on the deal structuring and earnouts, this is something a lot of sellers don't expect to run into. Uh, especially on the bigger sites. So uh, I'm gonna skip down to the finance part here real quick. So any site that's over $200,000 pretty much will almost always have a earnout. Not always, but almost always. Now a site below that, there's people with that money that will just pay up front or almost all up front uh, for the business. But anything over that, it's very rare. And the reason why because financing is super difficult in our industry. You know, if you're looking at a $500,000 Amazon affiliate site, you don't go walking into Wells Fargo or Chase, like, hey man, can you give me a business loan? I have this domain that's $10 worth of collateral that you can lend against, right? <laughs> no, that's how you get out of their office. So uh, finance is super difficult. Uh, that's why deal structuring happens. And the most common kind of deal structuring are seller finance earnouts. And what that means is, I have a $200,000 website, you give me $170,000, and then you pay me $30,000 over a period of time. 
like six, 12 months, maybe even longer, depending on the negotiations. And uh, the deal structuring part of that earnout might be tied to net revenue or net profit. So for example, if uh, my earnout was, uh, I'll pay you 2K per month, as long as the site hits $4,000 per month in net profit. Now for the seller, that's kind of a bad, bad deal in some aspects, because you don't want to tie to net profit as a seller. As a buyer, it's great, because I can go hire a bunch of SEO guys, I can order a bunch of content, I, hey man, I'm negative 500 every month, <laughs> so I don't have to pay you that 2K, right? But if you tie it to revenue instead, it's a much better deal for the seller because revenue is a little bit harder to manipulate. So that would be like a form of a deal structure. Another really common deal structure you might find is like, uh, uh, especially on bigger sites, you'll, they'll give you an upfront amount and then they'll have a very long earnout where they pay you a very low monthly earnout, say like $500,000 on uh, $60,000, and it's over a 12 month period. So this is called a balloon payment. At the end of the 12 month period, they've only paid you maybe 12K of the 60K, and they have to now give you all the rest of it right now, the big balloon payment. So that's a very common deal structure as well, uh, just something to be prepared for. You know, I have this huge post, uh, as Matt said, I was, I'm pretty prolific, it's like 8,000 words long or something, if you guys wanna go read it, it's uh, all about deal structuring for online businesses. All right, so this is the case study for Rob. Uh, Rob is so generous to allow us to talk about his uh, business here. Uh, so the business overview, the niche was sports and outdoors. The monetization was Amazon Associates. I'm sure most of you guys are pretty familiar with Amazon. Uh, monthly net profit was making $8,324. Number of content pages, 169. Uh, it was listed for $275,340 on May 1st of this year. That listing multiple is at 33X and it sold for 235 k uh, later that month uh, with a sales multiple of 28X with $235,000 upfront cash. So you might be looking at this right now and be like, uh, 275, but it's over 235, it's kind of a bad deal, right? But if you get all that cash upfront without any earnout, there's no risk to the seller. And what's nice is that Rob had a hard minimum sales price of more like 175, and he was also valuing the site more at 200,000 because of some of the stuff that we'll go into here in a second. So this was actually a win for us. So what kind of questions did these people ask Rob? Obviously, traffic drops, right? Like, why is the traffic down in January? Well, that would be because of Black Friday and Christmas, obviously, the most busiest time of the year for almost all of us. Some of us, our affiliate sites only make money during this time of the year, right? So that was the reason uh, I was coming back down to normal. Also at this time, uh, Rob hadn't listed his business with us in January, but at this time, 75% of his PBN links had just been replaced with the good old white hat editorial links, right? So that moved him down by one or two positions because some of those links weren't as powerful as the PBN links perhaps. And as we all know, if you move from first position down to second or third, you lose quite a bit of traffic. Uh, the other problem was, and this is the reason why the valuation in Rob's head was a little bit lower, around the 200K bar, was the general trending downwards for a couple of the products that had high search volume. They just weren't as popular as they used to be in years ago, uh, but they were still getting some good traffic. And of course, it was seasonal, performs better in the summer months. Most people aren't camping in the winter, unless you're in Alaska like me. And then, uh, there was, unfortunately, there was a negative SEO campaign that he had to disavow those links. And so all these answers he gave to the buyers, and the buyers were impressed. So like, okay, yeah, this all makes sense. So this goes back to the confidence building, right? That allows you to do better negotiation. They're like, hey, I actually know what's going on here. <laughs> you know, let me explain it to you. Uh, one of the guys asked, like, okay, you make a big deal about changing your PBN links to White Hat. How is how was that done? How much did that cost? And how could I do it? So. Rob actually partnered with Doug. Doug had all the systems in place for it. They spent $4,700 uh, one off for the temporary virtual assistants, which netted them 45 to 50 guest posts, and plus they did a scholarship link campaign. That was the extent of their white hat outreach um, right there. Also, uh, Rob ended up giving a detailed document showing the disavowed links that he did, uh, that he disavowed from that negative SEO campaign. As you can tell, those questions aren't that hard to actually answer. But it's all about preparation, right? Like if you prepare to answer those questions, 
then you're not going to spend like two, three days or weeks trying to figure out why did I have this dip, you know? You come prepared to the table when you prepare, when you submit your site for sale, that allows you to be hyper responsive like Rob was. So uh, it's a very good tip. Uh, so the first offer came in for Rob's site. It was $250,000 and 320 bucks. Uh, upfront payment, 125 and 160 with a sim same earnout or $1,000 more earnout and paid from a 30% monthly net profit until finished. So this goes back to the deal structure I was just talking about, uh, where it's not that great of a deal for Rob if it's tied to that profit, because they can just purchase all that stuff, that all, anything they want, and that 30% could be like $1 one month, you know? Um, so Rob counter, sales price 250K, upfront 150, 170K, so bigger, bigger upfront, and he wanted the earnout to be 100% of the monthly net profit to finish. Great deal for a seller, terrible deal for a buyer. <laughs> because the, the buyer now will have no operational cash flow when he's running that business. He just spent $170,000 out of his pocket and because he didn't want to pay the full upfront fee because he wanted to use that cash flow to improve the business. Now he's expected to pay 100% of the new business's profits. It's a very difficult deal for a buyer to accept. Our business advisor suggested that a blue payment would be a better counter, but luckily we never had to because we, we never did the uh, actual balloon counter because the second offer came in. This one was a sales price of 200,000. So again, uh, the valuation that Rob thought the business was actually valued at. And uh, the cash up front would be 150K and an earn out of $50,000 paid out in $5,000 increments per month as long as it reached over $8,000 in uh, earnings every single month. So the problem with this, and the maximum earnout is 14 months, the problem with this is that we already talked about the business for a couple of the products at least for on the downward trend, right? So that's concerning, because if it has to hit like where it's at a peak performance, then when it goes down, it means Raw will never get his earnout. So this isn't a good deal either. Uh, so we counter with 190K, upfront 190,000, no earnout. Uh, the offer was positioned actually not to get 190K, but to get Rob's hard minimum, his 175, 180K up front. And so it was supposed to make it, this deal look way more attractive. Like, okay, I guess I'll give it to you 175K. Like, oh wow. <laughs> so uh, ultimately, what this led to was more discussion of earnouts. They created a special clause basically where they lowered the threshold where they would pay out a $2,000 earnout as long as the site hit $4,000 per month. This is far more reasonable, it's about half of what the revenue was making uh, right here. So if it did go down, there's that, you know, buffers that, that, that Rob would still get paid that earnout. Uh, they also included a bonus if the site did hit over a K and remain over a K, uh, they would pay 6.5K in the earnout for that month. So fairly good counter, very reasonable. Uh, as you can tell, both the buyer and the seller are being flexible here. This is always about give or take, right? Uh, so this is something to keep alive with negotiations. Luckily, we didn't have to do this deal either because a third offer came in. The guy's like, hey, man, I'm paying 235 k right now. The run is done. That's over. <laughs> over. So you can probably guess which offer he took. I mean, you already know, so you should know which offer he took. <laughs> so uh, migrating the six-figure site, if you do a private sell, this could be an incredibly tedious process that is a super annoying hassle. If you use us, we do it for you. Uh, we change the hosting, the domain, all the affiliate links to the new owner. We work with the buyer and the seller to make sure uh, this annoying task is done. It's part of our service for you guys. Uh, as, as I just mentioned, we have an entire specialist migration team that does this. So what happens at this point is the buyer wires in uh, to Empire Flippers the money. Now, if you're not using Empire Flippers, I highly recommend using some kind of escrow service, at least that the buyer will wire into the money before you hand off the site. Um, what we do is they wire, the buyer wires in the money to us, we hold on to the domain, and we put the domain onto uh, the buyer's hosting. Once it's all set up and stuff, we have the buyer verify the traffic, verify the revenue that is hitting the numbers it's supposed to, that was agreed upon. And then the buyer, after about a week, two weeks, he'll say, go ahead, I'm happy, release the funds. We'll release the funds to uh, the seller minus our 15% commission. So we sent Rob $199,750. And that was all in 30 days. Who? I mean, that's pretty good earnings for a month, right? Uh, so what would you do with $200,000? There's dozens of possibilities of what you can do with a $200,000 war chest. 
Uh, we live in an amazing time of digital opportunity with all the knowledge that's in this room alone. It's just amazing. Like in this room alone, I you guys to do is don't get distracted. You know, if you find something that's working really well for you, then you should stick with what works for you. If you're a black hat person that's just charred to the bone, black hat, and you're making churn and burn sites that last between two months or maybe a year, keep doing that. Scale it to the moon. When you're making 30, 50 k per month, just go buy the white hat site. You don't, you don't need to learn the new skill. I mean, it's all front loaded anyways. Most of these sites take an hour a week to run, if that, uh, unless you want to grow the site, obviously, which you probably will know how to grow the site at that point. Uh, so that's what I suggest. Uh, build your factory, whatever your method is. Productize your site creation. Um, really fine tune your processes and you can turn any black hat cash flow into white hat assets. So if you have an affiliate site right now and you want to make a profitable exit, you can go check out our free valuation tool to find out what it's worth. It's empireclippers.com slash valuation tool. And it will give you a rough estimate. Now, this isn't the real uh, price of your business. Now, if you submit your business with us, we actually do a uh, vetting process. We have an entire team that goes over your site and, do, and we use past data, past sales data to price your business. Uh, the valuation tool, it will give you a rough estimate. So you have at least a rule of thumb of what your asset is worth right now. So with that said, uh, thank you so much for listening to me. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free more to ask. A big round of applause for Greg. Hey guys, we just finished up with Greg's presentation here at Food for Thought, selling digital assets. I personally got a lot of knowledge bombs dropped on me. I learned a lot. How do you feel it went? I was good. It was, it was good, man. I was nervous, but it was fun. Uh, always love coming out and you know, meeting the community and connecting with every guy. So yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. Thanks for having me as well. Appreciate it. There's I think we had about 100, maybe 150, 200 people here. Uh, I had a standing had. ovation built in. <laughs> no, no seats for you to sit on, so that helped my confidence. Of course, you come up to the conference? I am, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. optimized for the conference. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll see you guys around. Yeah, man.